Today we're checking out what I think is the best vampire tribal oathbreaker, Soren Imperious Bloodlord. For three mana, he starts at four loyalty. Plus one, target creature you control gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. If it's a vampire, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Plus one, you may sacrifice a vampire. When you do, Soren Imperious Bloodlord deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. Minus three, you may put a vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Later in the video, we're gonna get into what high mana value vampires we can sneak onto the battlefield with this. But first, as always, let's take a look at the signature spells that pair best with them. 24% of decks are using New Blood as signature spell. As an additional cost to cast New Blood, tap an untapped vampire you control. Gain control of target creature. Change the text of that creature by replacing all instances of one creature type with vampire. This is a black control magic. That is really uncommon. And yet it is so on theme. This is exactly what vampires would do. They bite you and now you're one of them. Second most popular at 9% of decks is Vampiric Tutor, an instant for black. Search your library for a card, shuffle, and put it on top. You lose two life. All right, this card is good. We all know this card is good, but I can't help but feel that this is as popular as it is because of the name. Vampiric Tutor and a vampire deck. Yeah, man. Number three is the Elder Spell for Black Black. Destroy any number of target Planeswalkers. Choose a Planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each Planeswalker destroyed this way. This card is uh, so good an Oathbreaker. I usually don't talk about it because it's just a generically awesome card. But 7% of decks are using it, so there you go. Number four is Insanguinate for X Black Black. Each opponent loses X life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Great in multiplayer and it's on theme. Again, Insanguinate means to, to take the blood out, I think. Next, we've got a couple kill spell options. Urge to Feed is an instant for Black Black. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. You may tap any number of untapped vampire creatures you control. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of those vampires. Feast of Blood is a sorcery for two. Cast only if you control two or more vampires. Destroy target creature, you gain four life. And Olivia's Wrath is a board wipe, uh, a wrath, I guess. For five mana, each non-vampire creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of vampires you control. Blood Tribute costs six with a kicker of tapping an untapped vampire you control. Target opponent loses half their life, round it up. If Blood Tribute was kicked, you gain life equal to the life lost this way. I like this a lot less in Oathbreaker than I do in Commander where we have 40 life. Here we have 20. Also, this is a multiplayer format. So targeting opponent, not so good. Very cool card though. Now for one that I love, Arterial Flow costs three. Each opponent discards two cards. If you control a vampire, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Yeah, signature spells that say each opponent. That's where it's at, I'm telling you. I also want to mention Whisper of the Dross and Drown in Icker, two small kill spells that have proliferate. I think this is always a good option with a Planeswalker that puts plus one plus one counters on things like Soren does. You can proliferate up those counters and also the loyalty counters on Soren. All right, now what can we cheat into play with Soren? How about Butcher of Malakur, a 5-4 flyer? When it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacks a creature. Defiant Bloodlord, a 4-5 flyer. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And I really like Chancellor of the Dross. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, at the beginning of your first upkeep, each opponent loses three life, and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Wow. This card's pretty unplayable in Commander, but in Oathbreaker, it's a lot better. For starters, we start at 20 life, so the game would start at 17 to 17 to 17 to 29. Also, this is a 60 card format as opposed to 100, so we're much more likely to be able to get this in our starting hand. And of course, he's a 6-6 flying lifelinker, so that's great too. If you want to see more Oathbreaker content like this, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.